A bowling ball is suspended from the ceiling using a light string, i.e. massless. While the string is taut, doesn't stretch, the ball is pulled back so that the string makes an angle of 6.5 degrees with respect to the vertical, and then the ball is released from rest, i.e. no kinetic energy to start with. The resulting period of oscillation is 3.3 seconds. What is the speed of the bowling ball at the bottom of the swing? Put a limit check, investigate what happens when the ball is at the bottom, and you barely pull it back at all. Okay, so no real idea of how to do this, but that doesn't matter because we start the same way either way. So you start by drawing a picture. I'm going to draw a picture, not to scale, of a pendulum being pulled back and released. This will be theta. Yes, and it swings down, goes this way, velocity goes that way. So after we got the picture drawn, the next step is to basically write out every formula you think might possibly be relevant here. The one I'm going to put up is for the period of a simple pendulum. Most people don't have this memorized. No reasonable person probably does. Um, I've been doing this for a while, so it's oh, oh, I know this. But you're assumed to know it, even though that's probably an unreasonable assumption. Memorize this for the test. You're not expected to derive it. The other concept that I'm going to look at is potential en uh, conservation of energy. So energy kinetic initial plus energy potential initial equals energy kinetic final plus energy potential final. And I'm going to say that the bottom is h equals zero. This will be h equals uh, h initial. This will be h final. And we're not really concerned with the h, so to speak, just the change in h. So I'm going to say that initially starts with no kinetic energy because it starts from rest. And kinetic energy comes from motion. I'm going to say it's potential energy final is going to be zero because it's going to get to its lowest peak. And so when, then when I rewrite this, I get mg. I'm going to use delta h because I'm really concerned with the change in height, not the actual height. 1 half mv squared. The masses cancel, which is good because we don't know what they are. And we get velocity squared equals 2g delta h. Okay. So that works. Now, so what we need to do then is we need to find this delta h. So looking at our picture, this is going to be the length L of the taut string, taut like a tiger. And this right here, if we do a triangle, so katoa, cosine of theta, cosine of theta is opposite over adjacent. We do some trigonometry, we would find this is cosine of L cosine theta. And this whole length here is L, therefore I could write L equals L cosine of theta plus delta H. Rearranging this, we get delta H equals L minus L cosine of theta. Factoring out L, we get L one minus cosine theta. Okay, that seems plausible. So now, that's about as far as that part can go. So we're going to then analyze this formula. So they give us period, we know gravity, and so we can find L. So I'm going to rearrange that formula for um, L. And we can totally do that. Uh, just math. So period over 2 pi squared times G equals L. I know that was a lot of math really fast. I think it's correct. I'm like 80% confident. So then I can say that this equals, I'm going to kind of mosey down a little bit for more length. So this is more space, two over t over 2 pi squared g 1 minus cosine of theta equals, oop, put that back, 1 minus cosine theta. Is that true? Maybe true. Yes, because that's that part right there is L. All right, so now, despite the messiness, hopefully you're not graded on how clean your work is because my work is not clean at all. Now we're going to go back up to this equation. So this is delta H. Delta H is this. 
And so we can say velocity squared is two. I'm going to take this G and move it in there. I know it's going to be a lot of steps all at once. T over two pi squared one minus cosine of theta. Yeah, that might be work. And then, so now we know everything here except for velocity, which is what we solved for. So I'm going to put this into a calculator. My calculator of choice is Wolfram. So it's going to be two times quantity. There's going to be a quantity over a quantity. The top quantity is going to be a numerator. It's going to be G, 9.8 times the period, which I think was 3.3 .3 seconds, which is the units we wanted in. The denominator is going to be 2 pi. I could probably just round that out to 6. But that'd be a little extravagant, I assume. A little presumptuous. Uh, 1 minus cosine of theta. Theta is 6.5, but specifically 6.5 degrees, because we don't mention degrees, it might be assumed radians, in which case, fail. So we have 2 gravity times period over 2 pi squared, 1 minus cosine theta. Yep, and it gives us that. Oh, but we don't want this. We, want, we don't want v squared. We want velocity, v, by itself. So we square root this. 0.58. Yep, seems plausible. Maybe might even be correct. So 0 0.58 meters per second. I like that. I like that. I'm good with that. And so now we want to say the limit as theta approaches zero of velocity of theta. So I'm going to take this. I know this is an abuse of my virtual whiteboard because you can't do this at home most likely. That's okay. I don't care. And as we get to uh, cosine goes to zero, cosine of zero is one. One minus one is zero. This whole thing gets zero, which makes sense because if you have a pendulum just hanging there, you just barely touch it, not at all, don't even actually touch it, it's not going to actually swing. And so that's the idea of if you don't displace it, not going to swing, seems plausible, maybe even correct. Hope that helped. See you next time.